Good morning, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Yes, folks, I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Today, i like to share with you when lines blur, restorative justice, PMS versus PMS number 41. We are dealing with Christian oxymorons exposed. And one of the biggest and the hardest lesson I had to learn, although I was raised a Christian, I was brought up to love Christmas and Easter and all those parties because those were the times that we could really reach out to the people because people were more receptive. But it took a long time to figure out why all the infighting, why so many people committed suicide, why people were so distraught. Because often I was called in as a youth leader, youth pastor, and pastor, and people, uh, that person that was called in when someone was sick, or someone was dying, or someone was about to commit suicide, or did commit suicide, or someone was in trouble. And I was called in to help and assist. But you know, it kept them working on me. The big why. Why are we in such a desperate lack of true truth and understanding and the peace that God promised? Let's check out what I discovered. And folks, I'm talking over a period of seven decades now. I'm 70 years and a half and I was born in 1950, June of 1950. And as we are making this, this is December 2020. A remarkable time. And I am going to share the highlights of what I discovered, what it means to get true peace and true happiness. Let's check it out. So what is the reason when lines are blurring? When we celebrate something, there is an excitement, there is fun. We come to a point of celebration because there's something that happened, something exciting or something that means for us. So what are we dealing with the holiday season? What are we dealing with really? Are the living scriptures a Christian doctrinal dilemma? Because we see so many contrasting situations Around Christmas time, we have a president in the United States that's soaking on his thumb and refusing to acknowledge. Then you find out that the guy is suffering of HDHD and he has all kinds of medication for that, but he seems to totally out of control because he has enablers. When I talk about an enabler, I'm talking about a person or a group of people that makes it able. And those that are doing that are mainly Christians, the body of Christ. And so being a person that was brought up as a believer in the body of Christ, I always questioned what is happening and why it is happening. And so maybe we can find out what is the doctoral dilemma. Blessings on all the sons of light who have cast their lot with the law that walk truthfully in all their ways. May the Lord bless you with all good and keep you from all evil and light up your heart with insight into the things of life and grace you with knowledge of things eternal. Folks, when I look at the body of Christ and particularly the leadership, and when I say leadership, I mean Paula White in the White House, and John Hakey, directly connected, um, Vice President Pence, 
Also, Kenneth Copeland, Pat Robertson, Seth Roth, and many, many, many others. I am truly anxious to find out what those people are really up to. Because this has nothing to do with what God says. Although they keep on confirming that this is what the Lord says and this is what the Lord says. I am here and my name is Brother Caleb. But that is my, my name that I use. My real name is Robert Solovelt. And I call those people out because I hope that they stop abusing the power and the love of God. Because they are fooling the body of Christ with their baloney and falsifying prophecies or falsified prophecies. Folks, these men, when I was young, 17 years of age, I was inspired by them. And now that I've grown up and I'm 70 years plus, I realize now that we have all been deceived. But there is a time that you got to open your eyes. When questions continue about men make beliefs acting as obstacles, what do you do? When do you know if they even corrupted your ideas, violated by man-made doctrines? If you're not following the original gospel teachings, what are they? Could the promise of Yeshua, I will make known unto you deep and mysterious things, modifying a range of long-held beliefs? See, for me, I don't just throw this in. I have been struggling with statements and comments from the church, from the churches that I belonged to at that time because it did not make sense. If you are a common person, meaning a normal person, and you keep on hitting your head, you keep on hitting your head, you keep on... Now when do you stop hitting that wall? Doesn't it become time to wake up? When will the body of Christ review its double standards and clean up the mess? The law was planted to reward the children of light with, with healing and abundant peace, folks, with long life, with the fruitful seed of everlasting blessings, with eternal joy in the immortality of eternal light. Yet, did the Trojan horse, Christianity, capture the true followers of Yeshua HaMashiach? Uh-oh, there's a Trojan horse? Do you even remember what a Trojan horse was? At a time that two people were, two countries were at war, they were wondering how they could ever enter that city. And somebody came up with a tremendous idea. He said, why don't we make a statue of a horse? And inside we make it hollow and we put in our soldiers. And when they bring in the horse as a victorious signal, a sign that the city has won the enemy, we will let our, end, our soldiers out and at night they can capture the city. And that's exactly what happened. And the Trojan horse became a conviction for many people to become like a Trojan horse. And Satan is the same with Jesuwa HaMashiach. You see, in the very beginning when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, somebody was jealous, Beelzebub. He was the person also known by the name of Lucifer. And many people know him as Satan, the devil. Yes, folks. And as he got nervous when Adam and Eve become very close with God, he had to bring in something. And he used a snake to lie. Psst, are you sure? Psst. And so, again, when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, with the commandments of Jeshua HaMashiach, you say, Jesua HaMashiach. He came with the commandments from God Almighty. And when he entered the entrance, the lower part of the mountain, he saw his people dancing and acting like idiots, drunken morons. Similar to what we see today. And they were dancing and partying and, and being out of their minds. And he got so mad and he just threw those stones down. And maybe you've seen the movie, it looks awesome. But reality was, Moses couldn't get the people to ratify the covenant that God had prepared for the people. And so he had to wait till Jeshua was born. When Jeshua was born, it was different.
See, when Yeshua was born, many people know him as Jesus. Something else happened. He stuck to the desires of God. He fulfilled the law in every aspect. Now, why was the law so important? Because God is law. Every scientist, that whether he believes or not, is immaterial. Every scientist will agree there is no accident that the world is turning around. There is no accident in anything they discover. It is all done by law. There is a physical law and there is a spiritual law because God is law. And so when God gave the commandments to the Jewish people, they took those commandments. But the first commandments of Yeshua HaMashiach and the, that he fulfilled and the commandments between Moses and the commandment between Adam and Eve, they were all the same. Listen to the law. Adam and Eve failed. They missed something in the education. Adam was born. Adam was created. Let's put it that way. It was first Mother Earth and God picked up the soil and he blew on it. His spirit activated the soil and it became Adam. And Adam learned mentally to communicate with God. Then he got a wife, Eve. And the moment Adam and Eve were together, they were walking in the presence of God, the law. But they didn't realize that. So when the snake came and said to Adam and Eve, psst, psst, something happened. They cut themselves off from the presence of God. And God loved his children so much that he had a plan immediately. And so he had the covenant plan, but the right people had to be there. And so when Enoch walked with God, he was no more. He was perfect. He could enter and walk in the presence of God. So God longed to see those other people come as well. And therefore he gave a covenant for the children of light to Moses. But when the children of light were choosing for darkness, he said, I give you an option. You either can choose for death or you can choose for life. And so when the commandments were, the covenant was destroyed because of their hard headedness, Moses got now the commandments, the Ten Commandments. Those were a different covenant. Because that covenant belonged to the father of death, Satan. And that is why so many of us have a frustrating time wrapping our head around it. Because when Yeshua came, he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law of God. Because God is law. And when the, the law was redeemed, now he could do something because he restored the relationship between mankind and God. What does that mean? We now could enter the kingdom of God, but we had to follow the way, the truth and the light. So what are those ethicals? What are those morals? What are the values of Yeshua? Now, as Brad Caleb, I do my small part in carrying the Great Commission teaching them to observe all things the Lord commanded. But what is it? What does the modern church know about the original Gospels or the actual teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach? About the way, the truth, and the light. See, I believed I was a Christian. I went to Christian school. I went to Christian whatever. I ended up at Bible school, seminary first, Bible school, preaching for 12 years as an evangelist. I started in maximum security in Holland, all over the world, and eventually I ended up in Canada. Till I said, no, 
to somebody. And I learned something that standing up for your rights, there's nothing wrong with. But what does it mean, standing up for your rights? If you defend something, you've got to be willing to accept the consequences. You see, when I said no to my friend, I did not realize that he, as a head of the Freemasons, the Freemasons connected with the Illuminati, they have power. And my friend threatened me, he said, you will see how much power I have. And after 18 years in court, six years with lawyers that I spent over $10 million on and cash, and then losing $5 billion worth of collateral, ending up in prison because they were determined to teach me a lesson. And if you killed somebody, you got maybe four or five years. But I had dared to say no to the Freemasons, and therefore I was being punished six years times three, and my wife three years. However, in the process, I came to learn something that I had not realized. That there is a power following the way, the truth, and the light. And sometimes we have to lose certain things. And it feels like you're going through a twilight zone. Because what you were taught in the Christian schools had nothing to do with Christianity. Actually, everything to do with Christianity. See, I discovered that Christianity existed about 134 years before Jesus Christ was born. That Jesus Christ's name was not Jesus Christ, but his name was Jesua Hamashiach. And why did I come to that conclusion? Because during the time that I had to be self-defense, my wife and I both run out of lawyer's fees, and the judge did not allow us to get another lawyer. And we continued. And so I grabbed a couple of books and studied. Because study for me is something normal. And as I became proficient in the law, we lost the case. Twelve years. But we won on appeal. You see, there is a beauty of the law. When a lawyer is outsmarting you with lies and all kinds of other things, you lose the case. However, then there is an appeal process whereby the judge will be judged on the decisions he made. And if they were correct, and on appeal we won. And that taught me a very big lesson. A lesson that helped me. First of all, I had to get rid of all the anger and all the stuff because it was hurtful. Uh, my friends, everyone that I knew left us. My kids, we had used every penny in order to defend ourselves. And that meant also the university funds and everything for our kids were gone. So I had to accept the fact that I had lost, which I was not used to. And in the process, the Lord was molding me. This was not because of the Lord. The Lord used the situation to mold me and to open my eyes. Go to your evidence. See, I was questioned on everything I believed. I did things because I believed. I did things because we had prayed with the investors. I did things because I prayed with the people I invested in. But was that right? And going back over everything, I started to write a book. Actually, I didn't know it was a book. I started to write. And as I was in maximum security, uh, you have all the time, 22 hours a day, you sit in a cell. And I started writing. I kept on writing. And as the book started to form, it took seven years. And 2019, I published it on Amazon. The Deception Protocol, the Prodigal Son, Protocol Blueprint. And now I started after that with 
deception protocol simplified. Because I realized that over the 18 years in court in total, I'd become more like a lawyer. I had to, I was forced to speak like a lawyer and that is not easy to handle. So I got to the understanding that I was the prodigal son. I was not a Christian because a Christian is a follower of Serapis. See, the law had forced me to look always at evidence and precedence. So what is the evidence that Jesus is the Christ? See, Jesus was, his name was Jesua HaMashiach. He was born as a man and he fulfilled the law as a man. And because he trusted God completely, I wanted to know who Jesus was, the way I was brought up. And Jesus came out of a tribe called the Essenes. And the Essenes are all the way back to Enoch. Enoch was the one that walked with God. And then God said eventually, hey, why don't you come with me? And it was, he was 365 years old. His son, Methuselah, lived almost a thousand years. And those things intrigued me and I wanted to know more about it. And as I came to understand that the Christians were forced to live and become Christians in 325 AD, because from the time that Jesua HaMashiach was crucified, raised up from the dead, walked with his disciples, and then he went up to the Father, he said, I am going to our Father your father and my father now in court those are very important things if i pray to jesus as a god and he is going to his father and my father that means that jesus jesua hamasia and i are brothers if that means something for you wonderful if you think i am just crossing your faith awesome because then i have done the right thing you see, you got to think, what is the evidence? Why am I celebrating Christmas if Jesus was a man born like me? Like me, he went through the way, the truth, and the light. And God Almighty said, and I am pleased because you have done what needed to be done. And now we have restorative justice for all. And we have to follow the way, the truth, and the light. Because the covenant that God had prepared for Moses was the covenant for the children of light. But the covenant, the Ten Commandments that we ended up with was the Ten Commandments. And that was death. Every time we violated the law, we were indebted to Satan. I do believe that I mentioned something earlier, that the body of Christ, the leadership, the people that I used to look up to, people that I learned from, I believed, that are prophesying now that President Trump is a man of God and God will do miracles around Christmas time. I realized there's something wrong. And when you come to a point to question your leaders, you're doing the right thing. Now, did that get me into trouble? Of course, I've been excommunicated three times. You know, the first time I had no clue what they were talking about. The second time I thought, whoop we do I was 17. And then the third time that it happened, I was 23 years. I did not know what it meant. And years later, by the same group, I got again kicked out and I said, well, forget it. You go your way, I go my way. And I was glad because something had changed in my life besides losing millions of dollars and billions of collateral something else had happened see i got released from a group of people that believed that they had to follow satan see christianity the true name of christianity means you are following a deity called serapis the God of the underworld. And you say, come on, you're doing difficult. No, go back to when it started. It goes back all the way to Alexandria, 
uh oh, we had a fellow that was very successful in everything he did. He was a young fellow. He decided to conquer the world and it was amazing, amazing what he did. And then he came just about to die. And they were praying to Serapis, 325 BC. So in that time, Serapis was the god of the underworld. Those people didn't know better. Those are the gods he are praying to. So when the Christians were ordered to become Christians, because that's basically what is happening, in 325 AD, Anno Domino, in the year of the Lord, something happened. You got a choice to choose life or death. Now, different than God, you had the choice immediately. In other words, if you said you were not a Christian, they threw you in the arena. If you said you were a Christian, all you had to say, I believe in Jesus. Just similar to what they do today. But what was reality? The church, as it had grown to be, the followers of Yeshua, they were the followers of the way, the truth, and the life. The light. Wow. And as such, there was a tremendous revelation of God taking place among the people. And as they changed and got affected and affecting other people, in the year 325, the emperor of Rome was fed up with it. He had killed off so many of the Jewish believers because they hated the Jews. They never changed. They always believed in one God. And so by the time that most of the Jews were basically gone out of the group of the followers of Yeshua, there were now people, they call them Goyim. They were non-Jewish people in charge of the church. And they got pinned down by the emperor and he said, let's make a deal. Different than the deal that you see on TV, that deal was simple. I want you to pray the following, the Roman Catholic Church. You, the leader, you become the Pope. You have the authority and you represent Peter. And all the nonsense that comes with it. I say nonsense. Yes, folks. And what God said before, there is one God, the Christian believers under the emperor of Rome made it three gods and a whole bunch of other things. And everything that God had ordained got changed. Now we've seen it in the past. If you go against God, you go against yourself. Because it is either you choose for death or you choose for life. You either serve God or you serve mammon. When you cannot follow the Ten Commandments and you choose a leader in the United States, the White House, a president, who wants to bring back Christmas because it is so much fun, because we make so much money, then you wonder, are we serving God Almighty? Or am I following death? The choice is yours. Follow God and choose for life. Follow Satan, Shatan, Beelzebub, Moloch, or whatever you want to call him, and you call for death. You're wondering about the pandemic? If we want to strengthen ourselves, we got to reevaluate ourselves. Why are so many people dying? Folks, it is terrible, but we made that decision, and we can undo that decision by repentance. And I know that is a word that we don't hear very often. And it has nothing to do with Abba Dabba Do and here you are a Christian. It has something to do with repentance, true repentance. And say, Father, I am that prodigal son. It took me <laughs> six decades before I figured this out. One decade to word it and put it in the right way. And I'm learning on a daily basis because God is giving me wisdom and understanding. Folks, I'm not happy what happens with the pandemic. It's sad. But isn't it remarkable that the people that supposedly have the money, 
the billionaires, they cannot part of the money because they are in the power of money. And every time you are in the power of mammon, money, you are stuck, folks. And I was in it as well. And it took me a long time to understand that I am a prodigal son. And I hope that your eyes will be open too. Because only as a prodigal son, you decide to make that decision to follow the way, the truth and the light. And God himself will open your eyes and direct you and guide you out of this misery. I hope that this helped you. And yes, I hope that you have a good time of discovering who Yeshua HaMashiach really was. Because he is an awesome person. But he is a brother. And he said, follow the way, the truth and the light. And once you do that, God personally will educate you, invite you to become victorious. Now remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do.
Thank you.